Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Back with another episode of Cooking with Mike. Just kidding, it's not really a thing, Cooking with Mike. Sorry, I got this like reflection back here. It's all you're gonna be able to think about now. It's like a UFO back here. Hopefully I don't get abducted. Anyway, this video we're gonna be talking about a survival stove that I like a lot. It's the BioLite camp stove. We're gonna show some features and whatnot. And we're gonna be cooking a delicacy tonight. You guys are in for a treat. We're gonna be making some hot dogs. These are the turkey bun length. As often as possible, I got this thing for the environment where I'm trying to save the world, like or do my little part to save the world. So I'm trying not to eat as much beef and stuff because it's like, it's so bad for the environment because I watched this documentary lately, Cowspiracy. I'm sure this is gonna get people fueled. So chime in in the comment section below. If you're either like pro mass ag or if you're like anti mass ag. Anyways, I'm trying to do better. I got like solar panels. I got all this other stuff. I'm, try I'm trying to be a, I'm trying to be a better person. If that offends you, it is what it is. Anyways, I'm not the best person because we're still, we're still eating some mass farms turkey today. But hot dogs are kind of funny because in my early episode, sorry, I'm gonna ramble for a second. I'll get into the, I'll get into the BioLite specifically here. I'll like link down if I remember a timestamp that I get into that. So skip ahead if you're just like, I'm just here for the business. Hot dogs are kind of funny on my channel because in the couple early episodes of Weekenderlander, it's this little like adventure vlog, mini overlanding series that I have. We made hot dogs because I don't eat hot dogs regularly, like pretty much ever. So when I go, when I went camping, I was like, ah, hot dogs, they're, they're easy, they're no nonsense. I just had like a cooler at the time. Now I have a fridge, I have a Dometic fridge, which is awesome. Let me know if you want to see a video on that. Um, but early on, I was just like, whatever is easy, right? And I'm still kind of that way, whatever is easy. But anyways, hot dogs, it kind of became a funny thing and I kind of made fun of it. And I was like, what time is it? Wiener time. And then I made like a hot dog quesadilla, quesadilla, and I called it a wiener dilla. Anyway, hot dogs kind of became a thing and I haven't had them. We haven't eaten them when we went camping for a while. So I was like, I'm gonna cook some up because I got this. So BioLite, uh, full disclosure, I bought this. I bought, this is the Camp Stove 2. I've bought the Camp Stove 1 before as well. I, I've liked BioLite. I've liked the idea of this and these stoves for a long time. But BioLite sent me some headlamps. So I have a contact over there. So I asked if they could send me this. So now I have the grill for testing. So full disclosure, bought this, but I do kind of work with BioLite because they sent me that, but they didn't pay me to make this video or anything like that. I actually like this other stove a lot too, the Solo Stove. It's another stove that just burns twigs. It's not as fancy as the BioLite, doesn't have as many features and attachments and whatever, but it works well. Um, so I'm gonna do like a comparison video of these, but I wanted to do this BioLite specific video first because there's so many more features to it. But I wanna show you there's other options, but I want you to ask me some questions down below. If you have questions about like, what can you burn and how do they do and set, I don't know, I don't know, whatever questions you have, ask them down below. So when I do the follow-up video, kind of comparing this and just talking about the uses of what I'm just calling survival stoves, I can answer them in that video. So if you're curious about the solo stove, I'll talk more about it in the follow-up video. Ask me questions down below. And I wanna do a real important survey to a really, this is like really important survey. This is, do you eat your hot dogs with ketchup or with mustard or with something else or with nothing? Very curious, let me know. So survival stoves, the idea for me is you don't need propane or butane or isobutane or alcohol or whatever else you wanna to use to power a stove. I love those stoves, I use them, they're convenient, but another like the environment thing, I'm using a bunch of like single use butane or propane and I know I could get a bigger propane tank and I could mount it somewhere and I could hook it up and I could get it, there's things I could do better, but burning twigs and sticks and stuff that would just decompose naturally on their own. I know there's a whole argument for releasing that kind of smoke, CO2, whatever, but in my mind it's better for the environment overall. Plus I have an unlimited amount of twigs and sticks. I live in the mountains as you guys love to hear. So there's, there's sticks all over my property. I split firewood so I have a bunch of little pieces. I'll get into it. You can, you can, burn, you can burn anything that burns, you can burn it. So that's why I consider them survival stoves because you have kind of, depending on where you live, I guess, have an unlimited supply 
a fuel. If you go camping and the the wood isn't like super wet, like you know, maybe if you live in Washington, this would be a little bit harder, or like in Colorado or somewhere that it's just everything's covered in snow. But a lot of times when you go camping, there's plenty of free fuel everywhere. And what I do, I actually kind of collect it. I go out in my yard and I have a bunch of bins and I just fill them up with a bunch of twigs. Uh, so I use it for fire starter because I have a wood burning stove. And then you can use it in these stoves. So I have stockpiled a bunch, but if you go camping or whatever, you can play a little game with your kids, have them bring you a bunch of little sticks, sticks that are the size that can fit in this stove. We'll all show you in a second. And then you just, you have more and more and more and more fuel. It's awesome. So let's get into the stove portion. So this is the BioLite. This is actually a kettle. They sell a kettle attachment. You can get a bundle that has like the kettle that has this thing. The kettle's pretty big. It can boil a lot of water. I think it comes with like a little lamp too in the bundle. It has this little bowl. I don't really ever use it for anything, but this is the kettle. All right, let's get in here. So this is a front runner table if you're wondering. It's got like a stainless steel top, so I'm not too worried about melting it or anything like that. So this is the stove, the BioLite. This is the Camp Stove 2. They have a few models. I would recommend this one. This is the one that has the thermoelectric generator thingy built into it. So what this is, is a little thermocoupler thingy. This little pokey guy here goes in, collects heat, collects heat from the fire at the top here, and then it charges this battery. In addition, this thing has a built-in fan that runs off of the battery, the stored battery power, and then it blows air into here, makes it a hotter, more efficient burn, and basically keeps the fire going. Uh, it's like, you know, when you blow onto a fire and it makes it really roar. <laughs> That's basically what this thing does. In a nutshell, this thing also has a little USB port so you can charge your phone or whatever. That's what makes this kind of the ultimate survival stove. Charge devices, burn whatever you can find. It has little legs that open up here. This leg kind of locks it in place and you are good to go. So it does separate the heat a little bit from whatever it's on, though I would make sure you're not putting it on a flammable surface or anything like that. It does have this kind of safety screen around here, so it doesn't get as hot as it would if you didn't have it, but this is definitely still too hot to touch when it's really going. There's battery levels, fan speed adjustment, all kinds of stuff. You start the fire in here, the fan will kick on automatically. Once it's like, oh, it's hot enough, I can start kicking some fan air into it. So turn the fan up. Obviously, if you want more air, you want a hotter fire, turn the fan down if you want kind of a nice slower simmer. That's how the stove works. It's really pretty straightforward. The hardest part is getting a fire started down in here. I'm not gonna mess around. I'm just gonna use a fire starter. If you wanna, you know, make some feather sticks and do all kinds of kindling and, you know, make a little bow, start a fire, that's rad. I don't have time to do it on this video. So it does come, BioLite actually sends you in the kit like some chunks of fire starter, but you're gonna run out of those eventually. So get some more. If you wanna start it with paper or whatever, that's fine. I'm just gonna use a fire starter. I'll link to some that I use online. This is the kettle. So it's pretty big. It's interesting in that it kind of has these things down here designed to work with the BioLite. So you can use a traditional pot or whatever on here, but this really works the best. It helps funnel the heat up and really makes the whole system a little more efficient. You wanna line up these vent holes here with these low parts on the BioLite stove. It's pretty straightforward once it's in use, but anyways, that, that sits in there really nice and then you have a lid that sits on top that has a little pour, has a little rubber thing. I honestly don't love how this all goes together. Um, I don't really know that they could have a better system, but I would have probably preferred just like a regular stainless steel lid and this to have the spigot built into it. Maybe it would have been a little bulky. I don't really know. Maybe I'll try and contact BioLite and see why they did this. I'm sure there's a reason. But overall, works totally fine, very efficient, boils water really fast. I've used this a bunch. If I remember, I'll throw some B-roll. I used it in the, 
I, I mean, like I showed video of it in the mountain house video I did. I have a Weekenderlander video where we just use this in the solo stove. I think I'll be using more of this in the winter because one of the advantages of burning sticks and stuff is altitude doesn't, I mean, it matters. It does affect the burn, oxygen, how much oxygen is available affects the burn, how cold it is affects the burn, but you can always do it. You have propane and butane. Those things can freeze. They don't, some of those stoves don't work at high elevation. This is just a fire. It's basic. It's going to work wherever. So I'm, I'm camping in super cold sometime. I'm camping super high sometime, 13,000 feet and whatnot. So this will always work. So I may be using this more of the solar stove. I don't know. But anyway, that is the general concept. Now we have this piece, which I have never used before. So hopefully I can figure it out. I don't think it's too complicated. It sits on here like this. The flames come up, make this kind of a grill type deal. And I'm going to make some hot dogs. The thing that I'm going to try also is I'm going to try to put a cup on here and I'm going to try and at least heat up some water because I brought some hot chocolate to make. So the test is I'm going to see if I can grill up some wieners and heat up some water at the same time. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. It definitely won't heat water as quick or efficiently as if I use the kettle, but I think it'll work. So what we're going to do, we're going to take all of this off first, going to get some stuff out of the way. Oh, and you can use regular stuff. I like, um, this is a carbon steel pan. It's similar to a cast iron skillet or whatever you want to use in that it's kind of a seasoned device. You can cook right on the fire. This is just a lot lighter weight than cast iron. So it heats up faster and I'm, us I'm usually into speed. So a cast iron will maintain temperature a little more evenly. It'll stay hot a little longer. So pros and cons. I like carbon steel for camping because I'm usually like, I just want to heat it up quick whatever. I'm not cooking up five-star delicacies. My temperature fluctuates a little bit. All good with me. Cool. So the idea is like starting a fire, any other fire that you would start. And then once that's going, we got to drop in some twigs and some sticks. So I'll drop this in so we can, we can get it going. And then I'll talk a little bit about different fuel sources you can use. I'm in my garage. Hopefully I don't get carbon monoxide poisoning. It's super windy outside and cold. It's in the twenties. So we'll just do this. I'm actually going to crack the garage <laughs> just because it's kind of smoky at the start before the fan kicks in and starts, uh, starts consuming some of that smoke. What you can use are just little twigs like this. Little stuff, usually when you camp, you'll see these on the ground. You'll pick them up. Drier, the better. This stuff isn't that dry. So the more wet it is, the more smoke it's going to produce. So drier is better. So you see here, the fan has kicked on now. It says, hey, we're hot enough. I'm going to kick on the fan. You can see there's much less smoke now. Pretty much killed the smoke. And the fire is really, really going. I'll grab my camera and kind of show you what it looks like. Once it's going, you can really feed it whatever you want. You got some dry pine cones you want to drop in there. Go for it. I have a lot of this type of stuff just from my kind of firewood area. So I just kind of collect this and then I can throw those chunks in there whenever I want to. So what you can see here is we have air blowing up and coming out these top things and that's like burning up all the smoke and everything, making a hot, very efficient fire. Over here, we can see the lights, battery level, fan speed. I think this is like heat level. So I can kick the fan up if I want. That's going to make it hotter. I usually just run it on the low fan. That's usually plenty for me. Though if you're really in a hurry to boil some water, you can kick that fan up. It's basically just introducing more air. So you'll definitely go through wood faster that way, but you'll have a hotter fire overall. All right, I think we just set this in here and then we can open the top. So when you refuel it now, we open this little top guy and then we just drop a couple more sticks on in there. Make sure we got some good heat going. Don't burn yourself. I'm a professional. The fire's kind of coming up out through here 
making some pretty good heat. I'm gonna go ahead and get some water going. You will need something. You could use tongs. You could just use a spork or fork or something to lift this guy up. Cause that's gonna be too hot to touch. The other nice thing about using this while you winter camp is it's kind of like a little campfire. It's putting out pretty good heat, keeping my hands nice and warm in here. So I'm hoping you can see that the flames are like shooting out this way. So the flames are coming back up under here. It's not just like, it's actually gonna be flame broiled kind of. So it's pretty neat to watch. Let me turn this light off. So with some of the lights off, you can kind of see more what's going on here. So you can see these hot dogs are actually getting pretty close to being done. My water does not look like it's too close to being boiled yet. I bet if I put it right on top of this thing, it would boil pretty good, but I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. Once you kick that fan up though, you are gonna go through twigs pretty fast. So just get prepared for that. Might as well heat some buns up while we're at it. All right, so what we got here is a pretty, pretty grilled, tasty looking dog. Cook the bun a little too long. All right, I'm gonna put my cup right where I think the prime heat spot is. To answer the question, to a lot of people's dismay, I'm a ketchup guy. All right, we got some of those pre-boil bubbles going on. This is clean water. I'm not actually gonna worry about boiling it. It would be tough to boil it on this thing. I realize that. So let's talk about that in a second, but I'm gonna get some hot chocolate going here. Why I do this, I will say, should go without saying, uh, don't burn anything that you shouldn't be burning that will release, you know, super bad gases, especially if you're cooking your food directly on the flames. So while this thing's running, I'll talk a little bit. You just basically quit loading fuel in, let it run, eventually it's gonna burn off, and once it cools down enough, the fan will turn off. Obviously, keep an eye on that. Don't leave it unattended. This is an open flame. If you have a fire pit or somewhere that makes sense to dump ashes, don't just dump them anywhere, but if, if you have a place to dump your ashes, you can just dump it out and then you're basically good to go. Pack it up, once it's cooled down, tuck it away, not really any maintenance, come back, use it when you need to. Pro tip, if you want some really delicious buns, they might not have them at your grocery store, or they might, these are, like Hawaiian sweet roll buns, and they are next level. So one other thing you say, Mike, why didn't you just put this thing directly on the BioLite to boil the water? Well, depending on the size of your cup or your pot or your pan, you can kind of do that. But let me show you something real quick. The problem you run into is if you try to put this directly on here, you completely block where the flame and the air and all that stuff's coming out. So if your pan or your pot is bigger and can sit on these three raised portion, that's ideal. They do sell a little thing that you can drop in here that you can use po smaller pots and pans on. So if that's something that you wanna do, they sell a little thing, I don't have it, it just kinda sets in there, and then you can use these smaller devices. Typically when I'm using the BioLite, it's either a pan or it's the kettle that I have. And I almost always have the kettle because the stove fits perfectly in the kettle, so I just pack it together. It's the same thing for me. Now if that ain't the dinner of champions, I don't know what is. All right, that was a weird video. Fun for me, because I'm eating hot dogs and hot chocolate. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down below. If you're watching this immediately after I upload it, like you should be if you're on the notification squad, which you should be, 
They're having a sale, I believe. I think I have a coupon code with them as well. I'll put all of that in the video description below. During certain dates, the coupon code will add a free item or it'll just be a discount. So the code I think will be good whenever, but it'll like work differently. I'll put all that down below because I don't know it off the top of my head, but check that out if you're interested. If you want to see me review other stoves specifically, I have a bunch of them, but maybe if I don't have them, I'll buy it. If it looks interesting to me, let me know down below. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed eating that hot dog with me. Again, let me know down below. Ketchup, mustard, something else. And also chime in with your environmental questions, comments, whatever. I'm always trying to get educated. I'm not the expert at anything. If you have links to actual research, not just opinion stuff, that's always awesome too. But I'd love to hear your opinion on that kind of stuff because I'm interested. I'm interested. So I'm looking forward to reading the comments after this video. Again, also ask questions about the comparison with the solo stove or these kind of wood type burning stoves in general. And I'll try to answer those in a follow up video that I do at some point in the future. Okay, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Links to everything you could ever imagine. This hat, this jacket, these stoves down in the video description below. As often as possible, I make those affiliate links. That's kind of how I can support buying stuff here for the channel. So click the links, buy stuff, always appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.